What's going on guys? Welcome back to another MD Fish Tanks build video. So today we're gonna to be doing a new piece in the aquarium. I've done this a few times before. It's worked really well. So I wanna try it in a little sort of different way. There we go, we're all set up, ready to go. So the light isn't massively bright. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested in getting one, guys. But we don't want it really bright. Remember, you don't need massively bright lights if you're not even heavily planting an aquarium or you're using low light plants like java ferns and anubias, mosses, that kind of thing. So the main feature of this tank is gonna be the piece of loop which is coming out the top. It's gonna to get ambient lighting from the room. Um, oh, it's not staying here, by the way. This is just obviously so we can set it up in a nice area that you, know, you can visually see what's going on visually see of <laughs> so yeah first job i want to start building a framework inside that can come up in the middle like a column and then the piece of lead can sit on top of that to to do that i'm going to use rocks uh, let's go take a look what i've got okay so out here i've got a load of rocks to choose from we've got sirius stone black lava rock down the bottom there we've got some of this really cool rhino stone but i'm saving this for a big project coming up but we've got more over here Okay, so down this area, we've got some elderly stone, we've got pebbles. Um, I'm not sure what I wanna go for. I think what might work really well for this aquarium would be, oh, I've got a load of um, dragonstone down there as well. Again, that's going for another big project. I'm just saving that up. I think we should go for the Sirius stone just because it stacks easily and it interlocks. So it give us good structural support for gluing onto. Yeah, there we go, something like that, you see. But first of all, we need to put our substrate in or sandy base layer, because that can sit on top of it. I just wanted to see if it would work, but yeah, it will work. It will create a platform in the middle that we can sort of stagger stuff around, maybe one big piece on top. I don't know yet, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, take these out, sand in. There we go, that's a really, really, oh, this is dirty, get off. <laughs> that's a really, really neat start. So that's our base. Underneath has got the nutrients for any roots for plants we put in. They can grow into that. I've got some low light plants that I'm gonna put in there that will spread quickly. Any plants that grow fast are really good for water quality. They'll just purify the water and just make it so good in no time at all. So next we can start laying on our stones. Right, we're starting to get some good height there now, but what we need to do is make sure the back end isn't just completely open because stuff will get lodged behind there and we won't be able to clean it easily. So see that gap there, the gaps behind, we need to fill them out with a gravel. I like to use a really coarse gravel for this. You're not gonna see it and it will work really well. Thank <laughs> you. 
there we go looking good it's kind of dramatic as well isn't it that's our like sort of cliff face so on the top section we need to put a wood structure and that will just give us something for the roots to sort of lock into because currently if we put a piece of lily in there it's just going to float up isn't it i mean we could lock it down with stones i guess mm, that is an option but i think the wood will look more more natural won't it and this here is the wood i'm going to put it against the white so you can see this is the wood i'm going to use it's called finger wood it's like a root system that's obviously had the soil washed away. It looks so natural and good in anything. You can put it anywhere, it looks so good. First of all though, I think I just wanna sort of glue down some of these pieces because at the moment they're a little bit wobbly. It'd be fine if it was staying here, but I know that I'm gonna wanna move this bowl around from place to place from time to time. So I wanna just lock it all down properly securely using some 100% aquarium safe silicone or silicon, silicon, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, that's actually looking better than I thought it would. So what I need to do now is glue this piece of wood down. Again, that will just float straight out the top otherwise. Uh, to use that, we can use our usual cyanoacrylate super glue gel, which uh, it dries instantly on contact with water and is inert and everything, so it's all good. Yeah, there we go, we're locked down. It's just the uh, the Gorilla Super Glue Gel. The gel form is the best for this, guys, because it doesn't just drip everywhere. And it it does sort of bond on contact, but only just with a little bit of water as well really does help. But I find it's best to just leave it an hour, go and have some food or something, then come back, and it should be fully secure. Well, kind of fully secure. Secure enough to work with. It takes about 12 to 24 hours to be fully rock hard all the way through. Right, so it's the next day. The glue, the silicon, it's all set. So we can now start adding some water, plants, and some fauna as well. But first of all, we want to add a few details in the bottom and our plants in there. Now, I've left enough space, look, to get my hands down this side and then on this side as well. So that's important to remember. You need to re leave room for maintenance. I mean, something like this, I'm gonna set up so it doesn't require a lot of maintenance, but even still, you need to be able to, you know, wipe down the glass if you need to, especially to start with anyway. Once the whole tank's settled in, you barely have to do anything. Yep, that's it, no more. Don't overdo it, you'll just you know, crowd the whole area, we won't have any room for plants. So down here, look, I've got a little plant storage tank. I say little, it's actually quite big. <laughs> so at the back there, see that Hydrocottle Japan? That stuff is awesome, it doesn't need a huge amount of light, and it grows quite fast, pulls nutrients from the water column, all the things we want. Uh, this one's quite nice as well, I don't know what it's called. Um, what's that little label say there? Can I read that? It says, Gratiola. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, so we've got some Altanamphora, Reniki, Reniki Mini, <laughs> and we've got some, oh, that's Hatra actually, and a little bit of Ludwigia, and an Amano shrimp. Hello, fella. So yeah, I'm going to use those for a little injection of red. I'm going to use the Hydrocottle Japan, and probably a little bit of Pearlweed. You guys know every tank, it needs it. I have forgotten the last few actually, but yeah, I'm going to put some of that in, just a small little few sprigs of it, just because it sucks nutrients up so fast because it grows so quick. Right, that's the most I want to add in at the moment. I think it looks quite good, quite natural, the way it's all sort of crawling in each rock. It might not stay like that, but let's get some water in now, just so we can sort of see how it's sitting, and also we can add stuff later if we want to. But yeah, it'll stop it drying out as well while we move on to the next part.
Okay, looking a little bit sorry for itself at the moment, <laughs> but we'll sort that out. You know, we can so quickly fill this bowl up and, and then, you know, drain it out, refill it again. We can get the water crystal clear in no time. But I want to leave it there. So now we need to prepare the piece lily going to top. And you might be thinking, can the piece lily go in water? Will that work? Well, yes, it will. I've done it quite a few times now. Take a look at this. So this is currently a piece of lily setup I've got for <laughs> Phantom. An awesome betta fish. So you can see I've got it there. The piece of lilies are going into the water. The root systems are all in amongst these rocks and also the wood that I've got you can see poking up through as well. And it does really, really well. That's actually the root system you can see there, there and there. We just, again, we just got a little clip on desk lamp as well that works really well. And yeah, it's nice and cheap. It, it, and it works great look I mean the plants underneath do not grow fast but you don't really want that in this kind of setup do you, you just want to sit and enjoy it and, and uh, Phantom here he really does seem to enjoy it he, he wants feeding he thinks I'm going to feed him I will feed him in a minute anyway and I've also set some piece of these up in my Amazon aquarium as well so here is my Amazon aquarium for those of you that don't know it's doing really really well all the fish are healthy I mean I've just showed it recently in one of my sort of full tours of the whole of my two studios so if you haven't seen that guys go check it out it's really long video but you know it keeps moving quickly and it shows a lot of different tanks but yeah so where's the piece of lilies there they are look see there's one there there's one there did I just put two in no there's actually I think there's three in total anyway that's not important but <laughs> point is they're just in little hangers I hung them I made them on little sort of black spirally things and then just hooked them over the back put the roots into the spiral and the roots just sit in the water then so that that's how that's as simple as it needs to be and then the the roots pull all the nutrients from the water column and they're just growing so so well like look at the size they're about triple the size of when I first put them in but anyway when I did that which was about two or three months two months ago yeah possibly even three months ago now yeah I think it was actually time is flying well I had one spare and I plonked it down here in this bucket and it's just remained here ever since I could I didn't want to throw it out or anything but it's actually doing really well <laughs> I do not know how because look let me just turn exposure up look it's just in there with some gunk but there's enough fluids in there and uh, nutrients I, ex I expect as well just to keep it growing really well so I'm going to use this one and show you what we need to do to prepare it now to go into the new bowl So it turns out we actually had a lot of plants from that one, well, plant, pot, I guess. Uh, there's a few of the brown sort of dead, um, I guess those were the flowers at some point. There's a brand new one there. So they come and go, like new ones will grow out again um, once we've got it all sort of set up, set up properly and everything. But look, so each sort of section has got its own root system, which is ideal. Now, in the previous video, I did say that you need to make sure just the roots go in the water, but it turns out that's not the case at all. You can actually have them submerged like up to up their stems as well, and it doesn't affect them at all, which is brilliant because it makes it a lot easier for the next part. I think that's looking really really good so we're not going to get masses of brightness down in the bottom area but that's not what we're going for here it's going to be a sort of darkened you know subterranean thing <laughs> but the main focal point is going to be the fact that there's this amazing plant life coming out the top of the bowl so the water level will come up to about three quarters of the way and then that means that you know nothing's going to jump out or, or anything like that it also means that there's a right level of water for the roots to be covered and then you just got this explosion of green over the top and the spotlight coming down oh it should look really really good hopefully the light's still bright enough when the water's filled up but you know if not i can sort something else out Thank you. 
So we can now put some livestock in a tank. Now, a lot of you are gonna ask if you can put a better fish in here. I get this quite a lot with bowls and things like that. That is completely up to you. I mean, there's a good volume of water, to be honest. I've seen, I've seen better fish kept in less with success. Uh, it's, but again, it's up to you. I'm not gonna be putting a better fish in this tank. What I'm gonna be going for is just some snails and shrimp. This will keep down on any maintenance required because the shrimp and the snails will like tidy and clean everything in that area. All I'll probably have to do is water changes because there won't be much uh, waste being generated at all by those two little critters. But like I say, some people are completely against putting fish in bowls, so I'll just leave that down to you to decide. For me, this is more of an art piece, more like a living sculpture, if you like, that will evolve over time. So I'm just, I'm really interested in that aspect of it rather than necessarily putting fish in there. I have put fish in bowls in the past and they did very very well I have to say I even had some breeding I had my rice fish breeding in there cherry shrimp breeding there all that sort of thing so you know it can be done but it's up to you guys what you want to do. Mm -hmm.